This happens to be a heifer albino ball python, and she's bred to an albino ball python. And my concern is that she should have laid about 10 days ago. Just so that you know, an animal like this will actually go through what they call a pre-lay shed, and about 30 days later, they will typically lay their eggs. Now that's plus or minus a few days. She's actually 40 days after shed. You can see how distended she is right now. Now, to be honest with you, am I worried? Not that much, because Typically, they don't egg bind without laying at least one egg and then maybe have a problem with the overduct. The fact that she hasn't even laid a slug or an egg, I think we're okay. But 40 days is definitely pushing it. The longest I've ever had them go is 45 days. But I tell you what, that's not a good situation at all. You definitely want them to be anywhere from like 27 to 33 days. Even at 40 days, there's a chance that she could lay a clutch and the eggs could actually go bad because she's kept them in too long. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not that freaked out by it. But the fact is, I wanted to talk to you about this situation because a lot of people have actually asked me Brian it's been 37 38 days since my ball python shed she hasn't laid eggs should I be concerned the fact is is yeah something to be a little bit concerned about but truth be told most likely this girl is gonna lay eggs within the next couple days so let's hope it all works out I'll keep you guys updated but hey listen we actually have another ball python that just laid a clutch of eggs and that ball python is actually this girl here who has some eggs kind of out but she's actually an albino ball python that is actually het for clown and she was bred to this albino clown male, meaning that all of the babies are gonna be albino, and on average, half of them are gonna be albino clowns. That's pretty absolutely epic, isn't it? Let's go ahead up and set up a couple egg boxes and see how many eggs mama has. Let's see what mama has. Like I said, we definitely have a couple eggs that have got rolled out here. We'll candle these guys up for sure. And like I had mentioned earlier, I'm not overly concerned about that girl being egg bound. If she laid one or two eggs and then stopped laying, then I'd be tremendously concerned, but I'll keep you guys posted. Hopefully, maybe by tomorrow she'll actually lay. Who knows, even later on today. But look at this girl. She is just so incredible. Oh gosh, I didn't see those slugs down there. That's not good at all. But we do have a bunch of good eggs, so I'm not gonna be too upset about it. But wow, I tell you what, that stinks and again she rolled these eggs all over the place oh there's another one in her coil right here look at that so all in all she actually had a really nice clutch because she had four bad eggs but she still ended up having five beautiful eggs and one boob egg so six good eggs four slugs that would have been a 10 egg clutch that is a giant clutch for that particular girl but in the meantime we have six eggs here on average hopefully there'll be three albino clowns and three albinos regardless when these eggs hatch we know they're going to be bangers my guy drove goes out just cruising around a little bit and actually Actually, a couple months ago, we ordered a perch so that that way sometimes we can actually take Drogo out and set him up out in the open when maybe they're open to the public or when we're doing photo opportunities or something like that. Well, it's been a couple months and today that perch is supposed to come in. He's supposed to be here anytime. So I'm pretty excited about it. I can't wait to see how Drogo likes it because it'll be really cool to be able to take him out and not have to hold him all the time. We could take him out and just put him up there and he'll crawl around and stuff like that. It's gonna be absolutely incredible. Are you excited, buddy? Drogo's getting a new toy today. All right, Reptile Army, right now you need to join the movement, the movement that's really all about educating people about reptiles and using the funds that we create from Reptile Army to do good things. So go to reptilearmy.com, become our foot soldiers, go out there and tell people how amazing reptiles are, reptilearmy.com. Just checking out this little boa right here. This is actually what they would call a ghost boa. It's actually het for albino and also possibly het for blood red. So there's some cool genetics going on it. Now the ghost is actually aneurysmic and hypomelanistic and then you get it into the albino that's it's like a moon glow and then if you get it into the blood holy cow there could be some really cool things going on but the ghosts are actually really cool in their own right I mean they're just kind of that more silvery look to them the real beautiful pattern on the tails I mean I absolutely love boas something I've got to get back into more you know we have a handful of really cool boas but I tell you what seeing these guys makes me want more and speaking about boas take a look at this this is actually one of our Suriname true red tail boas right so everyone always asks like what's the difference between a true red tail boa and a boa you know, it seems like everyone that gets Colombians, which are really common boas, always say they have a red tail boa. But in actuality, the Colombians are a common boa that's a boa constrictor imperator, whereas these guys are boa constrictor constrictor, which is the true red tail boas. And you can just see the color on that tail. Unbelievable. I love the Serenams. We have some Guianas and Peruvians as well. They're just amazing animals. So one day, these will be up to size and hopefully we'll breed them. But for now, I'm just enjoying them and they will definitely be in the new expansion for the Reptarian. 
real. All right, so the purchase here for Drogo, actually we've got two of them coming. I don't know why we have two, but nevertheless, excited to see what these guys look like. So, you excited, Jay? Yeah. Wow. Oh, you got, oh. Hi guys, these are it. Those are your two purchases, Jay. What do you think? I you got like to get them. two of them. You like it? <laughs> you got two yeah. of them. All right, that's awesome. Who are they for? They're for uh, Drogo the Sloth. They like being stationary. I did more of like a simple level. Okay. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I like know. it. I hope he likes it, but yeah, I yeah. like it a lot. It looks good. If so you want good. to put him on, try it out. And if there's anything he's not liking, we could edit it out. So is this the one you think yeah. is going to be the one we'll use? Well, we can bring it in. We could give it a shot. Yeah, let's do it. Want to do it? Yeah. All right, let's go. Bring him out. So the idea is just so that we can bring out Drogo when we're open to the public, maybe we're doing an event, maybe when there's an encounter, and we can actually put Drogo on one of these, and we'll find out which one he likes the best, and then uh, he'll be able to hang out here and just kind of have some fun, and that way we don't have to take people always inside where there's a lot more stuff to navigate. At the same time, when we bring him out, we only can hold him, so this is gonna be way better for him, and I think some encounters. As a matter of fact, we're about to launch some virtual sloth encounters. You can check that out at reptarium.com. If you wanna do a virtual sloth encounter, uh, we'll be able to do that he'll be hanging out on the perch and we'll be talking about stuff so uh hey if you want to do it i think it's going to be like a 15 minute long encounter again reptarium.com we're launching virtual slothing slothing encounter that's what i just said <laughs> <laughs> see what he does see if he likes it huh oh I he doesn't he normally leave me that fast so i guess he likes oh, it no way he likes the smell of it i always think it's interesting how he likes he smells wood i think he likes the smell of it see isn't that bizarre? He doesn't know yet. He's like, I'm not sure where I can go. He just wants to smell for it now. He's, he's, he's intrigued yeah, by it, like for it. sure, right? As a matter of fact, we have a special tour in the house today. We've got a seven-year-old birthday. What's your name? Charlotte. Charlotte, come on over and meet Drogo. He's right over here. See, he's right on the ground. You can pet right down there if you want, Charlotte. There you go. So I think it worked out really good. Yeah, Drogo seems to be right. super happy. It's going to be amazing. We'll be able to add that to just kind of the way we do things here at the Reptarium. You know, again, maybe we'll have special hours when he comes out and people can come and visit him. Again, those virtual tours we'll be launching. And uh, I think Drogo, it's going to be an awesome kind of just a different thing so that when Jay takes him out, he doesn't have to always be holding him all the time. He can put him up here. And it's probably less stress even for Drogo. So I think he's absolutely going to love this. Feeling like going a little nostalgic on this one. Let's go ahead and just hit that egg time song. Egg time! That's right. And this happens to be a scaleless albino okatee. So the okatee and albino is what they would call a reverse okatee. And then of course the al and then of course the scaleless. So we have a beautiful little clutch here. Let's go ahead and get these eggs out of here. We've got two, we've got these ones right over here. And look at how beautiful that female is right there. She is just an absolute ripper. So we got those last two eggs. We'll go ahead and get mama all cleaned up, get her set. In the meantime, we've got two, four, six, eight, nine eggs. All of these are gonna be scaleless albino reverse okatee. So that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> By the way, guys, this clutch marks 100 clutches for the year with colubrids. We still have a long way to go, but that's 100 colubrid clutches so far. That's pretty exciting. Next up, we actually have an apricot Pueblin milk snake, and she is actually bred to a Halloween. She's a beautiful girl here. So again, this is a pretty classic apricot Pueblin here. The Halloween would have less of the red, right? So it's black and orange, basically. Let's see what mama had here. We'll get her all cleaned up and stuff like that. Oh, a relatively small clutch of eggs right here. We only have four eggs, no slugs. I'm gonna just look around, make sure there's no eggs in here. So small clutch of eggs, but still really nice, beautiful eggs. And look at how big they are. I mean, these babies are definitely gonna to hatch out really big. Hopefully we'll have some beautiful Halloweens in there. It's been a few days since our Egyptian Euromastix have actually got here and they're really settling in. You can see they're so brazen. They're so different than some of our other Euromastix that we've worked with because they don't seem to be concerned. I can be right up here kind of messing with them and stuff like that and they just hang out and that's what makes them so incredible. Again, they're just babies now. These guys are going to get big, three foot or so and really chunky. So I am so happy with the way they're doing. They're eating, they're doing well, they look amazing and again, they don't seem to be free out which is awesome meaning that they're not stressed at all i love it love this enclosure but eventually they're going to move into a giant enclosure because these guys will get big one day this next clutch is actually a normal ball python female just a really pretty normal ball python and she was bred to this banana fire pinstripe now he's fathered a couple clutches already this year and i've mentioned how i just love the cleanliness of this animal again it's a banana it's a fire 
and it's a pinstripe. So with this particular animal being bred to a normal, that means we can get a combination of those three incomplete dominant mutations. So, hey, it's gonna be a nice clutch. Again, entry-level ball pythons, love them. Let's see what mama has. And again, she is definitely a really pretty snake. I mean, the normal ball pythons that we do have, and we don't have that many of them, they're all really beautiful animals. And that's why we raised them up was because they were just really pretty normal ball pythons from a long time. Ooh, mama, what is going on, girl? She's mad at me for sure. So let's go ahead, get these eggs out of here. We'll put them over here. We'll get mama all cleaned up, get her ready to get feeding and getting ready to breed again next year. We've got two, four, six, eight wonderfully beautiful eggs. We have about a third of the ball pythons laid so far, meaning that we still have two thirds of the clutches still coming. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor, hit a playlist right over here. There's a whole bunch more for you to watch if you don't mind. Over on this side, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. That would mean a lot to me. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.